He needed to control the army stationed there. And he needed the aura of grandeur that Egyptian culture readily supplied. The unexpected and still new emperor lacked authority and majesty, but both these traits were offered to him. The biographer Suetonius recalled the new emperor's awkward first steps towards a new persona. As Vespasian held court before a large audience, two men approached. They begged Vespasian to cure their afflictions. They told him a dream had predicted that sight would return if Vespasian spit in the blind man's eyes, that the other would walk if Vespasian's heel touched his lame leg. The emperor was dubious and at first refused, but his friends persuaded him to try openly before the crowd. To Vespasian's amazement, the invalids were cured. All emperors needed legitimacy, they needed authority, they needed some sign that their power came from outside, had, had the will of the gods behind it. And it's very common to have miracle-type stories hovering around emperors, Vespasian particularly, because he comes to power from nowhere. He's not part of the reigning dynasty. He needs these signs of authority. Vespasian embraced his newfound stature, but he knew image alone could not hold the empire together, that his real power came from the military, and nothing would cement it more surely than a foreign victory. Vespasian fast returned his attention to Judea, to the province he left in haste the year before. What do you want me to do for you? I want to see you again. <sighs> then see. Your faith has made you well. I can see. <laughs> I can see. I can see. <laughs> Master. I... <sighs> Master. John the Baptist sent us to ask if you are the one who is going to come, or should we expect someone else? Go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind can see, the lame can walk. How happy are those who have no doubts about me. If you don't know Roman imperial theology, you will not be able to understand Christian theology, Pauline theology, New Testament theology, because it is set over against it. If you think of Caesar as an incarnate program of peace through victory, then Jesus is an alternative incarnate program because for the Romans, like the Greeks before them, there were human beings, human beings who could be raised to divine status. They knew, of course, of the immortal gods like Zeus or Jupiter, but they also believed that certain human beings could be ordinary human beings, stick them with a pin that go out, could be raised to divine status, and when they died, they were taken up to the gods. If, if they had done something of extraordinary value for the human race. And other expressions that many of us would think of, well, these are peculiarly Christian. And we're going to learn they were really Roman imperial titles, expressions, even expressions like gospel, for example, or even remission of sins, even epiphany. Words like that came out of the Roman matrix into the Christian matrix, as it were. Caesar the Son of God, the Son of God, and it's exactly the same word, of course, in Greek, that Son of God is all over the New Testament. 
Theo Weos. And then comes after that, the god Augustus. The god to be worshipped. It's almost like, well, there's those other gods, and yeah, yeah, they're nice too, but this is the one that really counts. This is the god Sebastos, the god Augustus, the god to be worshipped. And when you read it, if you, if you take out Caesar Augustus, it all sounds Christian. The proposal is that the epiphany, the epiphany, the revelation of Caesar, his presence in the world, has brought a new creation. It says, at least in practical terms, because the whole world was going to destroy itself. Now, stop for a second. They're never just talking about the Mediterranean or Italy or Rome. They're talking about the whole world has been saved by Caesar, as we saw at Axiom. So, the birthday of Caesar, they say, is good news. Gospel. Euangelia. The word we use for gospel. The birthday of Caesar is good news for the whole world. His epiphany has not just brought peace out of war, but creation out of chaos. So as you read this inscription, you almost see the whole theology, the whole Christian theology coming at you out of Roman imperial theology.